or evolution, as we say here. And then when asked what they mean by that, stating that they don't know what the theory of evolution is, or proving by their mm -hmm. comments that they don't, they don't know what it is. In other words, they don't know even what they disbelieve in. Now, that's alarming. And so when I meet talk show hosts in America who are like that, I don't wait for them to shout at me. I shout at them first. In your assessment, are all religions equally dangerous? L latently, yes, they are. I mean, my daughter goes to a Quaker school in Washington, as it happens, and I don't say that the Society of Friends is the same as um, the Mahdi Army, but I do say that they all make the same mistake, which is to surrender reason and surrender evidence and say, well, why not let's believe things without evidence and not just a few things, but the most important things, such as why are we here, what are we here for, how do we come to be here? They say, no, we, we, don't, we don't want to analyse any of that or reason about it. Let's just refer that upward and, and sink to our knees. They all make that mistake. They're all equal glimpses of the same untruth in that respect. Would you um, accept that there are many religions... And the sleep of reason brings forth monsters. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. No, it's a good question. For the, for that, you might that, you like that coda there. Um, it, would you accept that there are many religious people who do great work and have done, through their work with the poor, through their work for uh, equality, for the abolition of slavery, for their work with trade justice, those kind of issues, and they do it Well, they better have done something about slavery since Christianity imposed it for so long and upheld it for so long. I'd be, I, it was a high time for a few Christians to say they thought it was a bad idea. Why they had needed to add that they did it because they were Christian, I don't know. Uh, you're thinking of Mr. Wilberforce, I suppose. Well, I'm thinking... Well, I mean, uh, others too, but, I mean, Thomas Paine and... Um, and Martin Luther King. And Thomas Paine and the others who founded the American Anti-Slavery Society were all non-believers. But that doesn't do any credit to non-belief either, because you could be an atheist and pro-slavery, of course. Here's my wager or my challenge. It's this. I'll ask your listeners. Maybe someone wants to call in. You have to name uh, an ethical statement made or a moral action done by a believer religious believer, that couldn't have been made by or hasn't been done by, but basically couldn't be made by a non-believer. No one can find such an instance. But, so I, I can name you dozens of heroic German Stalinists who hmm. fought very bravely against the, Hitler. My point but it doesn't, it, it doesn't go to their communism, does it? It doesn't vindicate their communism. Do you think that there are horrific acts then <clears throat> as an opposite to that? Mm. which have been carried out by religious people, which could not have been carried out. Yeah, whereas, yes, if I ask any audience, and I've tried this too, can you think of something absolutely wicked that was done by a religious person because they were a believer? Well, nobody has any difficulty in thinking of it. It's not exactly the same question, though, is it? Is there, is there a, a particularly horrific act which couldn't have been done by a non-believer? That couldn't, no, it doesn't work precisely. Uh, in, as a corollary, you're quite right. But, uh, or, or not until I've worked on it a bit more, it won't. But, but, but if I say to people, just the ordinary question, can you think of some, a wicked thing that a believer has done that you wouldn't have done yourself? Mutilate the genitals of a child. Um, blow yourself up in the hope of paradise, taking other people with you. Um, things of that kind, preaching hellfire to children, terrifying children, a very, very wicked thing to do, lying to children, another wicked thing to do, that you, you a morally normal person, just wouldn't do. Uh, nobody has any difficulty thinking of a crime committed for religious motives. Is it, is it not true that politicians, scientists, religious people are all capable of goodness and all capable of wickedness? Robert Service... Oh, this, is, of course. Yes, um... We were talking about the history of communism last week. Robert Service was on with his world history of communism. He's estimated that um, deaths from uh, Stalin, Mao and others, would, if I remember right, is around 120 million plus. Great wickedness carried out in the name of well, Stalinism, socialism, atheism. That doesn't necessarily... Not in the name of atheism, as a matter of fact, but, I mean, I know I have a chapter in my book entirely devoted to this argument very briefly. In, in Russia in 1917, millions of Russians have been told, ordered to believe for hundreds of years, that the head of the government of Russia should be a holy king. The Tsar was the, the head of the Russian Orthodox Church, remember, as well as an absolute despot. The, millions of Russians lied to, made to believe this servile nonsense. But if you're Joseph Stalin, who was educated in a, in a seminary to be a priest, you, 
you're missing a chance if you can't exploit a great reservoir of credulity and servility like that. It's been ready-made for you down the ages by feudalism and by the church. Lo and behold, he produces miracles, Lysenko's biology and agriculture. He produces a witch hunt. He produces an inquisition. He produces mass adulation of the leader, for whom all thanks are due. Uh, he re replicates the entire thing. To have a quarrel with my worldview, you'd have to show that it was a society that, that followed the precepts of uh, Lucretius and Spinoza and Voltaire and Jefferson and Einstein and Bertrand Russell and show that that a society had fallen into famine and terror and misery and torture and dictatorship for that reason. That would be a fair comparison. Mm. But the others, the ones you mention, are surrogate forms of religion that are, are built on the ruins of the collapse of faith-based worshipful societies. The thing is to give up faith and worship in the first place. So are, you, so are you saying that when a wickedness is carried out by someone because of their religion, it's that religion's fault, but when the wickedness is carried out by an atheist, it has nothing to do with their atheism? No, I wouldn't say that. I didn't say that. Uh, but I say that it, people uh, are asked often, uh, sorry, are offered often by religion um, the right to give up personal responsibility, in other words, to cast their sins onto somebody else, uh, to have a scapegoat on whereby all sins are forgiven and uh, you're washed white as snow, to give up the idea of individual responsibility. I don't think atheism equals that in immorality. But an atheist can be just as immoral as a religious person. And what about when um, there are uh, numerous stories in the United States but, uh, and over here as well, when terrible things happen to a family? I was thinking of the, uh, the Walker family. I don't know if this made news in the United States. is last year. Um, Anthony Walker uh, was... Black, he was escorting his white girlfriend to a bus stop and he, and he was murdered. His mother, G. Walker, uh, who's a Christian, said, my family and I stand by what we believe, which is forgiveness, and I forgive their murderers. Now, surely the world is a better place for people like that. Absolutely not. The murderers should have been arrested. And, and Absolutely, but the world is a better place for people like the, G. Walker. Subjected to the strongest penalty the, the law possibly allows. No, it's wrong to love your enemies. It's absolutely immoral to love them. Um, let alone to forgive them. It's not her right to do that, I'm sorry. She may be one of the interested parties. It's in the general interest of society that people like that not be forgiven. Uh, the, 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 the interest we have is in justice, not in love or forgiveness. It's uh, positively immoral. The next thing she'll say is we should love the Taliban or we should love al-Qaeda because they're our enemies. I'm not letting her do that. I don't even think she should be loving her own enemies. I'm, I'm not going to have a loving mind. No, it's very important. This stuff is immoral. It says that there is. It, it says there is relatively no difference between a wicked person, who does whatever they like, and a person who abides by the law and respects their fellow creatures. It's an absolutely repulsive doctrine. My understanding, and I obviously can't speak for her, is that she wasn't saying I don't want justice for my son. What she was saying was, for me, personally, I forgive that act. But I. Uh, and an again, then I, then and it's I, just an empty gesture, probably give, designed only to. To gratify her. I'd like to know what the, the person concerned, the actual victim, would have said in this case. No, that, that just seems to me to be moral grandstanding of a very low kind. Christopher Hitchens is here. God is not great. Uh, a raft of emails, if that's the no. appropriate collective now. Um, uh, just one thing I wanted to uh, mention specifically. When you came in at 2 o'clock, people might have heard a laugh off microphone when the Salman Rushdie knighthood story uh, came up. Just be interested uh, in your, your views on that. Do you deserve a knighthood? Well, I'm a Republican myself, and uh, not that I'm ever likely to be offered a gong of any sort, would decline. I think it would have been churlish for Salman to decline once offered because, after all, the British government did protect him when he was in trouble, and uh, though sometimes with a slightly ill grace, it did do so. And now he's attracted the right kind of enemy for saying yes. So I, I feel a bit more solid about Sir Salman than I did a couple of days ago. Was that what the hell is it? Business is it of these uh, characters to pronounce on who we decide to honour with a knighthood? It's absolutely none of their business at all. And if they say it insults all Muslims, then they, they're in a weak position to keep on saying, "Don't judge us by the extremists." Was that um, the uh, arguments and, uh, and violence and the fatwa which was issued against Salman Rushdie? Was that, uh, do you think, in, in popular culture terms, the, the beginning of? Uh, this debate that we're having now about Islamism? Well, it was an early warning, certainly to me, of what might be coming. In, in other words, it was a huge intervention in our internal affairs by the theocratic dictator of a foreign state. 